हेलो आई एम लक्ष्मण महेश्वरी एंड वेलकम टू अवर फाइव पार्ट सीरीज ऑन न्यूक्लियर पावर इन इंडिया थ्रू दिस सीरीज वी विल बी कवरिंग द जर्नी एंड डेवलपमेंट ऑफ न्यूक्लियर पावर इन इंडिया द न्यूक्लियर केपेबिलिटीज दैट इंडिया हैज बोथ इन सिविल एज वेल एज मिलिट्री अरिनास द गवर्नमेंट डिपार्टमेंट्स एंड रेगुलेटर्स ऑफ न्यूक्लियर पावर इन इंडिया द इम्पॉर्टेंट ऑर्गेनाइजेशन रिलेटेड टू न्यूक्लियर पावर इन इंडिया लाइक बी ए आर सी एन पी सी आई एल Bhavani etc the various nuclear power plants and reactors in india like apsara cirrus etc the nuclear liability act of 2010 the treaty on the non proliferation of nuclear weapons or the non proliferation treaty and india's stand on it finally the challenges and concerns relating to nuclear power as we saw earlier india has nuclear power plants at a total of 7 locations which have 22 reactors put together the location of nuclear power plants in india in the order of the year of establishment is as follows the oldest nuclear power plant in india tarapur atomic power station maharashtra next rajasthan atomic power station rajasthan madras atomic power station tamil nadu narora atomic power station uttar pradesh kakrapar atomic power station gujarat kaiga generating station karnataka kundakulam nuclear power station tamil nadu as of now tamil nadu is the only state to have two nuclear power stations since 2010 there have been some relaxations to npt stipulations which gives new hope to india's nuclear power program recent agreements have been signed with the us and australia and the international atomic energy agency the ban on india for trade in nuclear technology has been lifted and now india is free to conduct trade with any country who wishes to do so it will give us access to nuclear technology components and fuel for peaceful purposes however the picture is not all rosy there are certain challenges to nuclear power the most important of it being cost overruns the actual cost of the projects are coming out to be much higher than those predicted further the fukushima nuclear disaster in japan in 2011 has raised questions about safety of atomic energy there have been mass protests against the new and upcoming projects in india and as a recent blow the west bengal government refused permission for a proposed 6000 megawatt facility near the town of haripur now it is time we talk about a difficult question how clean is the nuclear energy very often nuclear energy is painted as a clean energy option and therefore a solution to climate change is it really so although it does not produce any greenhouse gases but it is far from clean nuclear power generation produces radioactive waste which pollutes the environment for generations radioactive material also leaks into the environment during accidents further the discharge of superheated coolants cause climate change they can even raise the temperature of the ocean also please understand the scale of disaster if a nuclear accident happens it is irreversible uncontainable damage at a monumental scale both in terms of the number of people affected and the duration for which the effect will be felt it is also known to cause genetic level mutations and cancer india's journey in nuclear energy development cannot be complete without talking about the civil liability for nuclear damage act 2010 or the nuclear liability act of 2010 it was a highly debated and controversial act which was passed by both houses of indian parliament under upa regime in 2010 it aims to provide a civil liability for nuclear damage and prompt compensation to the victims of a nuclear incident through a no fault liability to the operator by the appointment of a claims commissioner establishment of a nuclear damage claims commission and for other matters connected with it by passing this act india became a member of the international convention on liability in the civil nuclear arena it caps the maximum amount of liability at 500 crores which is to be paid by the operator of the nuclear plant in case the cost of the damages exceeds this amount special drawing rights of up to rupees 300 million will be paid by the central government nla has faced severe criticism as it contains several controversial clauses the opposition at that time believed that the bill was pushed through due to us pressure 
but the government denied it. A major point of dissatisfaction is the amount of financial assistance to be provided. It is considered insufficient and unsatisfactory. Further, it was believed that the manufacturers and suppliers will to a large extent be financially as well as legally free. Only the operator that is NPCIL is allowed to sue the manufacturers and suppliers. Victims on their own will not be able to sue. The time limit to make a claim is just 10 years which is considered too short and there may be long term damages due to a nuclear accident. Also, no civil court is given the authority to entertain any civil suit. Only the Nuclear Damage Claims Commission will evaluate the claims. In 2011, a public interest litigation was filed against the Nuclear Liabilities Act in the Supreme Court of India. The constitutionality of the Act regarding the right to life as enshrined in the Constitution of India is under scanner. With this, we come to an end on the discussion of nuclear power programs in India. For more information about NPCIL, the Nuclear Power Corporation of India, please watch our dedicated video on that. You can watch the video on Non-Proliferation Treaty. Thank you and have a very good day.